fat people. That's what Jesus preached, didn't he? We piped to you and you didn't dance. We mourned to you and you didn't weep. Man, we can't make you happy. Listen, don't be easily provoked. The Bible says about that bishop in Titus chapter 1 that he should not be self-willed. And then it says, not soon angry. Listen. This thing about not being angry is mentioned in the Bible more than tithing. Hey. Yeah. This thing about not being angry. Man, that's a lot of verses about not getting angry in the specific point that you should be soon angry or quickly angry or be hasty in your anger. Look at Proverbs chapter 20, 25. We're going to look at several scriptures here. Proverbs chapter 25. Listen, this is a heavy thing. To rule your spirit is a tremendous responsibility. You know, everybody's over there, you know, you've got this, all this stuff going on in Ukraine. And like Brother Hitler, I'm not up to the last minute on it, but nevertheless, a bunch of crazy stuff's going on. And then you got a madman over there threatening to blow everybody up. Anybody here think that's a good plan? <laughs> no, we don't like that at all. And, and you know what I keep hearing is I keep hearing people say, we don't need a, we don't need a crazy guy with nuclear codes. And I kind of agree with that. You know what we don't need in our church? Right. Crazy man's all the time blowing up all over everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what my kids don't need? A mad dad. Mm -hmm. Ever notice mad means two different things? But they're related. Mm -hmm. Who would have said in Proverbs 25, 28? I told you about the source of anger, it's your flesh. I told you about the speed of anger, how dangerous it is, and what the Bible says against it. Now let me tell you about the seriousness of it. Look at look what it says in Proverbs 25, look at verse 28. So we read it. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You know how serious this is? It makes you defenseless. You say, how? how what, what kind of defenseless are you talking about? Well, look at Proverbs chapter 29. You'll see part of it. Proverbs chapter 29. Verse 22. It says, An angry man stirreth up strife, Look at this. And a furious man aboundeth in transgressions. When you are soon angry and you have no rule over your own attitude and demeanor, you are exposed to transgressing. Not just a little, but abounding in transgressions. Why well, would I have victory in my Christian life? Listen, there's a lot of places that people recommend to start, but one good place that you might want to put toward the top of the list is your attitude, your demeanor. Hey. Being soon angry, you can't afford it. It's too expensive. It's too serious. The seriousness of anger, what is it? Well, your, your city's broken down. You have no protection. And man, temptation will pull you over. Right. When that anger comes on you. Bitterness, anger, bad. Look at Proverbs chapter 19. Well, how, how, how are we exposed, preacher? I mean... 
I feel like I do pretty good resisting temptation and everything. Yeah, when you're not mad, you do. Look what it says in chapter 19. Verse 19. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Anger will expose you to repeat offenses. Here's how this goes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be mad at I won't be mad at I'm sorry. I'm going to try not to get aggravated over silly things. Now, you know the difference between getting mad at over the right things and get mad over the wrong things, and I've just been irritable, and I'm sorry. But you have no rule over your own spirit, right? So you know what happens? Two days later, top goes off, plows the handle, say things that you shouldn't say, do things you shouldn't do, hurt all the people you care about most about, and then you know what you gotta do? I'm sorry. And then you know what's going to happen a couple days later? If you don't get rule over your own spirit, your walls are down, man. Repeat offenses. If you deliver him once, guess what you're going to have to do? Deliver him again. I almost take this as the advice. If somebody gets in trouble because they're mad, let them stay in the trouble until they figure it out. Let beat up somebody else, now they're in jail. Let them stay there a few days. Because if you get them out, you know what's going to happen? They're going to get mad again. You know what they're going to do? Same thing they did before. People don't learn well. You say, well, they, they don't learn well. Well, that, that is true. That, that they don't learn well. But the problem is they think that they're learning, that, that what they're supposed to learn is not to fight and everything. Well, what you're supposed to, or, or, or curse, or, or, or do terrible things to other people, or to say mean things, or to have a, a, a bad attitude toward others. But, but the truth is it's a heart condition. Amen. And the root of the thing is you need to learn to rule your spirit. Looking at everybody, everybody's so calm and happy. I, 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 why am I preaching this? <laughs> listen, I, I, listen, I don't know what goes on at your house. But the Bible says that you ought to rule your spirit and not be irritable and angry. I have a sweet disposition as a, as a Christian. Look at the Proverbs chapter 21. While you're turning to Proverbs chapter 21, Listen, when it comes to these repeat offenses, the Bible says there in Ephesians, uh, you know, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means get over it in a timely fashion. Amen. Before the sun goes down. It says, neither give place to the devil. Right. Your anger is giving the devil a foot over your life. It's not just the walls down now. Now the enemy's moving on. Right. Listen, having the walls down is real bad. Bound in transgression is real bad. But when he comes, kind of sets up camp right there, close to you, and starts ruling what you're doing instead of you ruling it. That's, that's disastrous. Here in Proverbs chapter 21, look at verse 19. <laughs> it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. men and women, everybody knows. You know, I mean, they even make signs for Cracker Barrel, you know, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. You ever seen that? You know, I mean, this is just a, this is just a fact of life. But I want to I look at a, a, a deeper point about this because When we read Proverbs, when we, we read uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 29, there's something similar in Proverbs chapter 15. I'll read it to you real quick to put it together with this. It says, A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Okay, so somebody that is angry or irritable, wrathful, makes problems where there are none. 
This woman, according to verse 19, the, the verse we just read, makes it better to be gone from her than to be with her. See, she's contentious. Contentious means, means that you like contention, fighting, bickering, so on, right? She's contentious. The man in the other verse in Proverbs 15, verse 18, a wrathful man stirreth up strife. Both of these individuals, one a man and one a woman, each in their own way, have made it impossible to live with them. I'm talking about the seriousness of anger. They're making it to where everybody else wishes either they were different or they were gone. Maybe not forever, but at least for a while. What I'm saying is that anger not only will it cause you to fall into sin and have repeat offenses and the enemy will move on in on you, but it will destroy your friendships and closest and most treasured relationships. Look at Proverbs chapter 22. We're going to look at one more verse. I don't know how the preacher handles all the call here in a minute. I'm just going to let him do what he pleases. But it is the responsibility of every Christian person to rule their spirit. Rule your spirit. Your attitude is under your control through the help of the Holy Spirit. Is that not true? charge of it. God's not going to make it. The devil can't make it. It's your choice. Look what it says here in Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare. To thy soul. How would you like to be the guy that the Bible commanded everybody not to be your friend? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna let you. That sounds like a bad arrangement to me. You want to be the guy that God tells everybody, get away from that guy. Well, he believes King James Bible. Well, yeah, but he's an angry man. Well, he's a Baptist, but he's an angry man. Maybe. The Bible says that anger is contagious. Right. That's what, that's what that is. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. He's already got a snare for his soul. I don't want a snare for mine. Do you want a snare for yours? The Bible warns you that anger is contagious. Now, now think about this. I don't want to catch the anger somebody else has and get the snare of my soul. But kind of taking this verse in the reverse position, I also don't want my attitude of anger to be communicated to my children or to my church or to my friends or to my family. I don't want to be the responsible party for causing someone else to fall, do you? What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that anger is serious. We pass it off as one of the lesser sins. Well, I know I get aggravated more than I should, but I'm working on my attitude. Lord, give me patience. Patience is just a hard thing for me, and that's just the way I was born and the way I was born. The angry people will look across the aisle and look down on the thief. But being a thief 
grief isn't contagious. They'll look down on the people that have maybe a point or two off in their doctrine, and yet they have the center most work of the flesh as a normal expression of who they are in their old man, shining out all the time, instead of putting off the old man, putting on the new, and ruling their spirit. Rule your spirit. Can you rule your spirit? Yes, you can. When can I start ruling my spirit? Right now. Because, listen, we started off, and I mentioned that verse in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. If your anger has damaged other people, it is good for you and for your spirit to make it right. Rule your spirit. Well, I just feel... You're in charge of your feelings. Feelings are wonderful things. Attitude, disposition, and all the things we feel deeply are wonderful gifts from God. Yeah. But when it's in the flesh, rule it. Yeah. The Bible says the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. I know that has a particular doctrinal meaning. But what you produce and what comes out, you should be ruling over it and God ruling over you. Lord, I don't know what the specific help is for this congregation this morning. But Lord, sometimes our walls have been down Lord, it's as though, God, we have no protection. Lord, we know, God, you're there and you've helped us, God. And, but, Lord, part of what you've done, Lord, is to equip us to rule our spirit. I pray, God, that you help the church. In Jesus' name.